On a trail drive, each and every man has his chore. The eye of the drive is the scout, riding out in front to test the trail and find water and bed ground. Others are stationed around the herd, hazing it when it moves and soothing it when it's bedded down. A very important man is the master of the check wagon, because he's not only going to be a good trail cook, but a jack of all trades as well. The man who holds the whole caboodle together is the trail boss. There's one man in the outfit who's got no chores of his own. Got to be ready and willing to take over anyone else's. Yeah, that's me, ramrod of this outfit, Rowdy Yates. Ma'am, that stage with the mail was due yesterday. Oh, don't get your hopes all raised up, Sonny. Just tell yourself it's due in sometime this month and you won't be disappointed. Oh, we don't make more than two mail stops on a trail drive. Letters all a man has to remind him there's more than steers and drovers in the world. I've been running this office since my man died five years ago, and I yet gotta see that stage in on time. Boss said to wait, so I'll wait. Hey, let me tote that thing for you, ma'am. You'll go strain yourself. Hmm. You wouldn't want an Indian wrestle, would you, boy? Oh, no, no. Thanks for asking. Why don't you go get yourself some breakfast, Sonny? You make me nervous loafing around looking so hangdog. Here, Mrs. Hadley. What spooked him, mister? He's never been shot before, not to mention pure cussedness. If it wasn't for you, Sonny, that critter would have been all tangled up with my water wagon, and that would have been a mess. Say, we owe this cowboy a drink. Yeah. Perhaps he is the one, Goyo. Es posible. You will see that he gets to the rancho. You will do whatever is necessary. Hail to the drover, gentlemen. What are you waiting for, Mr. Yates? Drink hearty. Yeah. <laughs> the next round's on me. As long as I'm off the water wagon, we might as well do it in style. <laughs> Fill him up again, my brother. Sound like a good story to me. Now go on with your story, Mr. Yates. Oh, allow me, gentlemen. Oh, uh, Mr. Yates, Miss Cowley. Ellen. Oh, uh, my pleasure, Miss Cowley. Mr. Yates, 
You were saying something about a cowboy that died and went to heaven? Oh, oh, yeah. I, I was saying something like that. Uh, oh, well, uh, St. Peter, see, he, he asked this cowboy, he says, where are you from? And the cowboy says, well, I'm from Albuquerque, mister. And St. Peter looked at him, he says, son, is there ain't no place named Albuquerque. And this, this cowboy, he pulls out his map and he points his finger, puts his finger right on it, you know? And, then, and he says, see, it's Albuquerque. St. Peter says, well, son, I'm sorry for doubting you. He says, we never had nobody from there before. <laughs> well, I don't know. It was something like that. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, how about some poker, huh? Give Mr. Yates a chance to win some Preston money. Sure. Oh, huh? I don't know. Oh, sit right down. Come on. Don't be shy. I can't gamble any better than I can drink or tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> the first tag's on me. What have you got to lose, huh? Not a thing, Miss Callie. Not one little thing. What you got, Mr. Yates? Not a thing. But maybe I could have another stack. Get a chance to get even? I'd hate to see you get in any deeper. I think we ought to settle up now. Settle up? <laughs> I already carried you over $300. That's not counting the stake I give you to begin with. $300? Hey, well, look, when, when I get this today, I get a salary plus a bonus. I, I could send you... I'm not anyway. in the business of staking trail trash. Trail trash? I guess you don't mean that, being a lady and all. One of you gentlemen go for the sheriff, please. Con su permiso. Senorita? Senor? I may have a peaceful and honorable answer. Yeah, like what? My patrona, Dona Luisa Esquivel Hadley, will be responsible for your debt. Who, who, what? She herself will tell you. Her credit is good, is it not, Senorita Cowley? For any amount. It looks like I'm getting shuffled around here. You should not question your good fortune, amigo. You will ride with me to El Rancho de Caballo Grande. I'm not riding with anybody anywhere. I'm gonna pick up the mail and get back to my outfit. That which Dona Luisa wishes of you not take long. Now, what could be worth $300? It doesn't take long. For you, it will be a simple matter. Vámonos. Uh, all right. It's been real nice knowing you, Miss Callie. <laughs> Rancho de Caballo Grande. The family of Dona Luisa has lived here for nearly 200 years. Tell me, does this uh, Dona Lu uh, uh, Mrs. Hadley, does she run this place all by herself? See, si. Like all the Esquivels before her, she breeds the finest blooded horses in the world. She sounds like quite a woman. Why can't you tell me what she wants with me, anyway? Because I would not presume, senor. What do you think, Goyo? <laughs> Calavera bonita, Ramon. You are an artist. Here, take the horses, seguro.
in honor of the holiday tomorrow. Holiday? El Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Time for feasting and making friends with death. Just the witch woman? She would not find the holiday complete without taking the hot blood of a rooster. It's gonna be all kinds of fun around here tomorrow. No, Father, please take me back to my room. Don't upset yourself. It's only the cowboy your mother spoke about. No. All right, my dear. There we are. Yeah, in the back. You are the young man my wife was expecting. Oh, I guess so, yeah. Goyo, would you tell your mistress that her cowboy's here? She's down at the stables. Si, patron. This is my daughter, Ellen, Mr. Uh... Yates. Rowdy Yates. I'm Albert Hadley. Mr. Hadley. May I get you a drink? Oh, uh, no. I, uh, I had one this morning, and it cost me $300. Oh? Well, that's a long story. Mine is a much longer story, Mr. Yates. And it cost me a great deal more. Well, here's to you, young man. Buena suerte. Good luck. You'll need it. How's that? What Goyo didn't tell you. Oh, no one's told me anything. I wish someone would. Well, I don't know what methods of persuasion were used, but you're here to break a horse. Is that all? In this case, it's quite enough. No. Don't let her make you do it. La Muerte is a killer. He can't be broken. She knows that. But it only makes her that much more determined to put him under a saddle. No matter who gets hurt doing it. Ellen, my dear. She always has to have the upper hand. And not just with horses. That will be quite enough, Ellen. My daughter is inclined to be a little over-emotional. The horse is merely a high-spirited Mustang. Yes. There's a depressing list of casualties to testify to that. But you are in my debt for $300. Yeah, I know. So I will take you to the corral, I will show you the stallion, and you can decide for yourself. All right. Ellen, have you tried your wheelchair? No. And why not? I won't have people staring at me, pitying me. And you do not think that they pity you when your father is carrying you in his arms from place to place? Leave me alone, Mother. Louisa. Louisa, you have other things to do. The chair is meant only to help you, to help yourself. Forgive me, Senor Yates. Let us go. right, you know. I mean about trying to help yourself. She's always right. She's an Esquivel, isn't she?
Didn't you ever, just once, try to make her realize that she was also your wife, Mrs. Albert Hadley? Yes. Before you were born. I was no match for her. She was a young woman who had no doubt that she was different and very special. I suppose I was just a little bit overwhelmed at the idea that she saw anything at all in a remittance man. Poor father. That cowboy. I hope he's not fool enough to try to ride La Muerte. Ellen. Please accept that wheelchair. Use it. I promise you that'll be just the beginning. Do it for me. For you. My good girl. All right. people. He has really lived up to his name. How's that? He trampled one vaquera to death. He crippled another and me myself he's thrown me off. I barely escaped his hooves. My daughter, you've seen her. And you know what happened to her. You mean you let you let your daughter try to ride that horse? It was her own choice. And she did it behind my back. Well, that isn't so bad, is it? From now on, my dear, you must get used to trusting me. Just why is it so important for you to have this horse broken anyway? It is simple. To me, this horse means defeat. Let us say it is not in me to let anything get the upper hand. Make up your minds, amigos. Is your love of freedom less than that of a horse? <laughs> if you have as much heart as an animal not to be broken, you will join me and the others against her. We have plans for tomorrow. It is more suitable than it should be the day of the dead. Tovar. How can we be sure we would be better off in Mexico? You have spoken of Juarez and his fine words of a good life, and even the poorest people owning their land. But we have no guns, no bullets. Ah, Doña Luisa does not know it yet, but she will provide us with those. In truth, when we leave, there will be little left of El Rancho de Cavallo Grande. And those that stay behind will be just homeless Mexicans among the Texans. <laughs> That's more than just a high-spirited Mustang, ma'am. Yes, but you can handle him. Yeah, well, my job's just to square myself and get back to the outfit as soon as possible. Well, you will be free to leave tomorrow. Why can't I go to busting him right now? Tomorrow is a holiday. The day of the dead. Yeah, well, I heard that, but what's that got to do with it? Well, the people will come here. Uh, they will pay their respect to the dead, and they will want to be amused. Oh. The dog of a Juarista, Patrona. I found him poisoning the minds of the stupid ones against you. Is that true, Tovar? Answer me. You have the word of Goyo. I have nothing to say. How many more think as you do? I will tell you that in a week that has no Friday. If you want to leave for Mexico, please leave. 
Gracias. And be shot down before I am 20 kilometers from here, as were the others who tried before me. There is only one way to teach him a lesson that he will remember, Patrona. Yes. A whipped dog is a wiser dog. man said, Goyo, that will be quite enough. Yes, do as you are told, Goyo. Now, go back to work, everyone. Concha. Please. Sorry. Terribly sorry. You must think us rather a strange household, Yates. I don't know what you want me to say to that, Mr. Hadley. Casual conversation is always a rare thing at this table, but the silence tonight is particularly ominous. You see, I've committed a mortal sin. I've dared to join you in defying my wife's authority. Is that a way to talk in front of our guest? Wouldn't victim be a better word? Mr. Yates, if it's money you need to get out of this, I can let you have it. Oh, well, uh, no, I'm afraid I couldn't let you do that, Miss Ellen. But then you won't have to risk your neck tomorrow just to please her. Now, as long as you and your father have turned against me, I think our guest should know the truth. Don't, Louisa. What possessed you to try and ride La Muerte? Hmm? Was it because you wanted to tame a wild thing? No. Was it because you wanted to prove your courage? No. It was because I failed to do it. I did it because I wanted to do it. Oh, I see. And you became a cripple for that? Don't use that word. You are right. It does not really apply, does it? Because all the doctors are saying that you cannot walk because you do not want to walk. There is nothing wrong with you, Ellen. Nothing except your hate for me. Baker, stop! Now, if you wish to remain a cripple all your life for that, it is your own decision. But I want you to know, it does not make me feel guilty. <laughs> So what do you think you are doing? I don't know how you usually settle your family affairs, Mrs. Hadley, but your daughter's had enough. Someday I'll kill you, Louisa. <laughs> For that, you need passion, Alberto.
Thank you. I'll be all right by myself now. Well, you sure feeling the way you do? I was used to come up here when I wanted to be alone and think. Hey, they're starting the holiday kind of early, aren't they? Well, uh, I'll, uh, I'll be back for you in a few minutes. Trying, anyway. You shouldn't have stopped me. I can't go back there with her. Now, look here, Miss Ellen. You've got to promise me you're not going to try anything like this again. I may as well be dead. I have no life of my own. Now, talk like that is foolish. A pretty girl like you has everything to live for. Like what? Well, one of these days, you'll be falling for somebody, and you'll be getting married and having a family and a life of your own. That's the way it usually works, isn't it? And who'd want me? I can't walk. I really can't, no matter what she says. Maybe you don't want to bad enough. You sound as though you're taking her side. Look, Ellen, I'm speaking my own mind. You've got to want to try. Win, lose, or draw. Do you think you can ride La Muerte by merely wanting to? I don't know, but I'm going to be in there trying. Well, trying won't make it so. Any more than it'll make me walk again. Come here. Look, if I ride La Morte tomorrow, will you try and walk? Come on now, is that a bargain? All right. She will take care of me now. I don't forget. Good night. Good night. Your daughter tried to kill herself tonight. So it's come to that. Is that all you're going to say? She might just try it again. I think you ought to try and help her, you being her father and all. Shut up! I'm sorry. You're right, of course. Thank you for telling me. Well? I, I'll find some way. Take your people and whatever you want from the hacienda and join Juarez. What reason do we have to trust this man, Tavara? You may not have a reason, Jesus. I have. But for the Americano and the English senor, Goya would have left no skin on my back. It makes no sense that a man should want to see everything he owns destroyed. 
Look at it this way, Jesus. For a long time, I've known who the Juaristas are, and I've said nothing. Doesn't that convince you that I want to see you succeed? But why? My reasons are my own. They're good reasons. One thing, Senor Hadley. Yes? Have you thought of Doña Luisa? Many will be loyal to her. She is an Esquivel. She will fight back. Is her safety not important to you? No, she will not fight back. I can promise you that she will not be an obstacle. You seem to have plans of your own. They will not disrupt yours. It is settled. You are one of us, amigo. Tomorrow, when everyone is at the corral watching the Americano, that will be our time to strike. Getting qualms? With all the noise going on around here, he's getting good and skittery. There's something you may have to do for me, Rowdy, out of the kindness of your heart. Oh, yeah? What's that? You saw the man Tavar today. Yeah. There are quite a few others like him, with all of his hatred and the same bitterness, and with good reason, too. I have a feeling that they're going to uh, choose tomorrow to strip the ranch of anything they need to serve the Juarista cause. Arms, ammunition, supplies, with everybody's thoughts on food, dancing, and, and death, it would be a very sound strategy. Well, everything going on around here, I guess me and La Morte just gonna be a sad attraction, huh? Rowdy, if anything should happen to my wife or me, I'd like you to see to it that my daughter, that Ellen, gets safely to my sister. I, I'll write out your instructions. I'll give you more than enough money to cover the trip. Uh, Mr. Hadley, I'd like to put your mind at ease, but La Morte there uh, might just kick my plans right out from under me tomorrow. I'm talking about my daughter's life. Well, all right, I'll, I'll do what I can to make sure nothing happens to her. Thank you. Thank you, Rowdy. Good night. Good night. I'm not thirsty, mother. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't planned on using one. Now, isn't that being a little too brave? I will get you one.
Come on, you don't want to stay here. Poor guy. Take him down, please. Miguel. Sí, patrona. Are you to be trusted? It seems I can no longer trust my people. You can be sure of me, Doña Luisa. Go and find Tobar. He must not go unpunished. Muy bien. Venga conmigo. Vamos. Said she didn't know what her husband was doing. Do as you are told, Ramon. You seem to be making a habit of crossing me. If the breaking of La Muerta were not so important to me, I would have you flogged at this very moment. I guess maybe you would. But then there is La Muerte, isn't there? Well, I won't just be busting to do you any favors or pay off my debt. Oh? What are you doing it for? The only thing's keeping me here is your daughter. I'll be breaking them for her. Still.
अच्छा Like death, he cannot be defeated. Give it to him. enough for everyone. More horses than we need in Doña Luisa's stables. You are fools! For 200 years, we, the Escobans, have given you a place to work, a place to eat and a place to sleep. And now you throw it all away. And why? Because Tobar speaks to you. He speaks to you about another peon just like yourself. Who are is from Mexico? Who promises you what? Beautiful words. Equality and freedom. You don't know what that means! It means to you that when you are ill, and when you are old, and when the sun is burning your crop year after year, there is nobody, but nobody to help you. You think Juarez and Tovar will help you? Never! They are too busy talking about equality and freedom! I cannot let you do it! I will not let you change your ways that were good ways. That were the ways of your father and of his father. They are the ways of El Rancho, the Cayo Grande. Never! I will not! Esperance! You have heard, you have listened to her. And you believe her, do you not? Do you not know she is making her memories your memories? Do you? You are a fool, Tovar! A fool you are! I'm all right. Because of you. Well, uh, all I did was get thrown like a sack of meal. But you tried. That was enough. Vamanos! Viva Wally! Robbie, for what you prevented me from doing, my thanks. God forgive me. 
I could think of no other way out for you. Louisa, uh, I... You must be very anxious to leave. With your daughter. Better be going too, ma'am. drive, a man can find the things he wants. A sense of God's good earth, the room to move in, a job to be done. Of course, there's not always enough water, and you can't always choose your own company. There's some that say that's all that's wrong with hell. It's up to me to handle good and bad. I'm Gil Favor, trail boss. That's him. He sure is a lonely sounding cuss. Yeah, he's gonna be a lot lonelier. Come on, let's flush him out. Did I see what I thought I saw? You must have. I'm seeing it too. Indians don't have things like that. What do you figure? Whoever firing them off ain't doing it for a celebration, not out here in the middle of nowhere. Maybe somebody's in trouble. Let's see.
stay away from me, mister, or I'll light it. Nothing to be afraid of, boy. We're just a couple of drovers. Where's your cattle? They're bedded down back there. We're looking for a coyote. Did you hear one a while back? I guess you scared him away, huh? That's what I meant to do. No, I mean it, mister. I'll light it. You're the one who'll get hurt. Not if I throw it, I won't. You uh, run away from home? Asking questions to strangers around here, mister, I'll just get you into trouble. Says his grandfather used to make fireworks. Maybe we'd best let him tell it. What are you doing out there all alone, baby? Where are your folks? It was Indians. Indians? They they killed my father and my grandfather, and they carried off my mother. Well, uh, how did you get away? I was hiding in the barn. The Indians took our horses and set fire to the barn, but they didn't wait to see it burn all the way. That's how I got out. You've been alone for long? Well, it happened a week ago, Mr. Favor. He's trying to get to his uncle in Eberly. Where do you come from, Davy? West Fork, Mr. Favor. But that's only two days back. You said a week ago. Well, it was his pony, boss. He couldn't leave without finding his pony. It took me a long time to find him, Mr. Favor. Lucky he scares so easy, or the Indians would have got him, too. Well, that's enough questions for tonight. The poor little lad's all tuckered out. Now, here's some warm soup for you, Davy. We'd go right by Everly, Mr. Favor. Now, Pete, even if we didn't, we sure wouldn't leave them all alone out here in the middle of the prairie. Well, go ahead and drink it. Which one wouldn't give you anything that would hurt you? Well, I never thought I'd live to see the day that you'd admit it, Pete Nolan. It tastes real good. I guess I'm just not very hungry. Oh. Well, I'll bet your horses, I'll take them out and Give him some graze at the Remuda. Well, couldn't he, I mean, couldn't you let him stay with me? Sure we could, Davy. It's a right smart looking little pony. But you better be getting some sleep. Come on. Oh, uh, you can use my bedroll. Not nothing of the kind. There's a place for him in my wagon. Well, I kind of like to sleep like I've heard trail drovers do. On the ground with your head on a saddle. Oh, well, sure. Uh, tell you what, suppose I tie up your pony to my wagon and, and you bed down next to Pete. Yeah, and get his saddle, huh? Oh, hurry up to loosen those seats. I got it. Now, he told me to take it in. Here you are, Pete. Get out of my way. You know, when he gives you that smile like that, you expect him to bust out crying. But you've got to remember what he says he's been through, losing his whole family like that. Uh, Davy, you want to feed these to your pony yourself? Oh, no, thanks. You do it. Thanks a million times from Jonathan and me. Sure there isn't anything we can do to help, boss? Just give him time. Can you imagine him setting off across the prairie alone? 
He ain't got no one but that one uncle in this whole world. Mr. Favor? Hey. You go to sleep now. We can talk in the morning. Well, he ought to have a bite to eat first. Now, nobody can sleep good on an empty stomach. Here you are, Davy. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wishbone. Now, eat it. Don't play with it. Mr. Favor? I've been thinking. On a trail drive, a man has to pull his own weight. That's right, Davy. Well, maybe you could find something for me to do that'd be useful to you. I'll sure find something. After all the suffering he's been through, to be thinking of somebody else. Well, now that's something. A fine lad, Mr. Faber. And it just might be he's got a fine imagination. Well, now that's no thing to say. Well, look at him. Poor little Tyke is too miserable even to eat. That's a mighty fine thing to do, boy. You learn the manners of the trail real quick. Oh, it's nothing, Mr. Wishbone. I always dry... I used to dry dishes for Ma. Well, it's a mighty fine thing to do anyway. And I done something for you. Yes, sir. There you are. Cut them right down to your size myself. Oh, thanks, Mr. Wishbone. My grandpa and Ma and Pa would have liked to see me in them, but, well, now that they're gone, I guess I'd better not be happy about anything. Oh, well, you keep them and wear them when you feel like it. Look like a real drover in them shops, Davy. Would you like to play with us, Davy? Uh, I don't think so, Mr. Quince. Thanks anyway, though. We don't have to play for money, boy. Look here, Davy. Oh, oh, Mr. Rowdy! He's all mine? He ain't no one else's. Took a little old frog to do what 25 grown men couldn't. Yeah. You know, it just don't seem right. The good Lord sending big troubles on a little kid. Well, I guess he ain't got to you like he has the rest of us. Oh, he gets to me all right. But I was just wondering why we hadn't heard about any Indians in the neighborhood. Well, there's a lot of things we don't hear about. <laughs> You'll have to haul to break him, Davy. <laughs> Now, here, Davy, you're going to need cowboy hat. That's the smallest we got. Yes, sir. Well, there's a newspaper I've been saving ever since San Antonio. Get it. All right, just goes to show you, never want to throw anything away. Don't ordinarily hire on a hand with a head quite as little as yours. Well, now, uh, that's something like. Davy?
<laughs> I feel just like a, I feel just like a real drover. Uh, except that I don't have a lasso and rope. Oh? You know how to use a rope? Oh, yes, sir. I think. Pete, see that he gets a rope. Oh, Mr. Faber. Thanks a lot. For what, Davy? Oh, for just being you. You're welcome for that, Davy. <laughs> Keep it up, Davy. Pretty soon you'll be ready to hire on as a drover. Oh, thank you, Mr. Favor. Thanks. Too bad we reach Everly tomorrow, though. It doesn't give you much more chance to practice. You worrying about your uncle? Yes, sir. Pete and I could ride in first, tell him what happened. Oh, thank you, sir. I guess I'd just as soon not ride in with you. Any other reason you don't want to ride in with us? Well, it'll be so bad on him, finding out about... Well, it's his whole family. By the way, you never did tell us your family name, Davy. It's Colby, Mr. Favor. That's our name, Colby. Colby, huh? It was Indians. That's what you said. Wasn't it, Davy? Uh, yes, sir. Indians. I think you'd better ride in with us after all tomorrow, Davy. Yes, sir. Stimson. Thank you, Sheriff. Morning, Sheriff. You drovers? Do we look like it or smell like it? Both. <laughs> no offense. Hey, the boy back there, is he a junior kind of drover? I was wondering if you could tell us where a family named Colby lives. Colby? No Colby in Eberly, not that I know of. And I know everybody. Well, there's a Colby here, you just don't know it. I don't. This town's never had more than 165 souls in it, none of them named Colby. You're uh, sure? I've been sheriff here for six years. I don't care how long you've been sheriff. There's got to be a Colby here. It's this boy's uncle. I don't care whose uncle he is. Colby ain't an everyday name. If there's somebody here named Colby, I'd know it. Well, Davy comes from West Fork. Maybe you've heard of the Colbys over there. No. Attacked by Indians a couple of weeks back. Indians? If there'd be any Indians within 100 miles of Everly, I'd know it. Everybody in town would know it. Oh, don't take it so hard, Pete. Some kids just find it easier to lie than tell the truth. Shall we be getting back, Davy? This isn't a hickory branch, but it'll do. You want to lobby, Mr. Favor? 
I want the truth, Davy. But I told you the truth. About your uncle? Well, no. About the Indians? Well, Davy, what about the Indians? There wasn't no Indians. You made up that whole story? Well, we do live near West Fork, and my grandfather does make fireworks, and... And you did run away from home. Well, I had to. I have to find my pa. Where'd you expect to find your father, Davy? Somewhere north in the Sedalia Trail. He's a bounty hunter. A bounty hunter? Well, what's wrong with that? There ain't enough lawmen around here, and somebody's got to do the dirty work. My pa's the best man there is. He makes a living for Ma and me catching men who've done wrong. So what's so bad about that? Davy, north on the Sedalia Trail is from Texas to Missouri. You expected to find your father by going along with us? Now, you can dream up something better than that. Well, my mom wants me to find him. She gave me a message about the man he's after. Davy, no mother sends a boy your age alone into the dry plains. She must be sick with worry, eating her heart out right now, wondering where you are. Now, are you gonna tell me the truth? Or are you gonna make me use this? I can't tell you. It's private. Oh, take him home to his mother. Well, wait a minute. I don't want any part of it. Uh, it's your responsibility. Well, why me? You found him. Yeah, and I sure didn't know what I was flushing out. Um, have Wishbone give you some food. It's a good two weeks clear grazing ahead. We can spare you. Well, what if you get into some trouble or something? Way I see it, all the trouble is yours. <laughs> Mr. Nolan? I never wanted to make you mad at me. It's just that I gotta be with my father. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? Every time you open your mouth, another lie comes out. You just keep your mouth closed. My mom's gonna be awfully mad, too. She ought to whale the daylights out of you. Creek through those trees. Fill the canteens. Wishbone packed us some meat. You want to get it before you go for the water? Hey! Hey! How far do you think you'd get before I'd notice? I'm gonna fix it where you can't run off no more. You're the one I should hobble. Does it hurt him? No, it doesn't hurt him. Not unless his feelings are hurt. And don't think you're gonna be able to untie it. I have enough trouble with it myself in the morning. You sure it doesn't hurt him? I'm sure. I want you to know, Mr. Nolan, no matter what happens, I'll always be your friend. Well, I told you to get that meat. 
kill it and we'll have a little bite to eat. for without you. to warn him till we see who he is. Get inside, boy. I want to watch. You'll get yourself killed. <laughs> Come out with your gun hand high. Good afternoon. What are you after, mister? That's a small boy. Sound kind of crazy? That's him, Mr. Gray. Yeah, yeah, it sounds kind of crazy. Wait a minute. I don't know what Davis told you, but I can kind of figure it out. You making out you didn't kill his family? He also tell you that he's going to his Uncle Colby in Eberly? Well, he ain't got no Uncle Colby in Eberly or any place else. He's run away from home. If you put them rifles away, I'll undertake to get him back. I told you you'd say that, Mr. Gray. I'm the only witness against him, and he can't let me get to my uncle. Mr. Gray, my trail boss is with a herd just a few miles north of Eberly. If you're interested in the truth, let's catch up to him. Well? You've got my gun. You can put me in the stagecoach and pat my horse on the back. It's, uh... It's out of the way, but... Well, I don't like to call trouble for no one till I hear both sides. But it's a trick! I heard about a half a day's ride. I'll get my horse. I meant to tell you about Jonathan, Davy. I didn't have a chance to untie him. You, you mean he's still hobbled, Mr. Nolan? Yeah. I didn't know it was going to take so long to find you. Gee, Jonathan's probably getting awful hungry. He sure is. And thirsty. Yeah, especially if we have to go all the way back to the herd. Well, maybe we better go take care of Jonathan, Mr. Nolan. Can you take care of this, ma'am? <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Gray. Davy, you sure you want to go with him? I guess I did tell you some pretty big lies. Hey, Mr. Nolan, are you sure you want to go with him? I'll have to take my chances. Come on. Uh, Davy, you, you forgot your frog. Uh, you keep him, ma'am. I don't deserve anything as nice as that. Davy, I want to get one thing settled with you before we go any farther. And you can have a choice. Either that hickory switch Mr. Faber promised you, and I can use it, or your word of honor that you're going back home now without any more trouble. My word of honor? You know what word of honor means. Oh, yes, Mr. Nolan. My father always says that a man's word of honor is sacred. Just like not lying when you're saying your prayers. 
Does your father sound like a good man, even if he is a bounty hunter? Oh, he's just filling in where there ain't enough lawmen. Sure. Well, I bet he's one man that always keeps his word. I can keep my word, too. Good enough. I, I didn't mean to make you mad at me. It's just, well, I, I had to see my father. Sure, Davy. Mr. Nolan? Yeah? You know, I like you a whole lot. Uh, we, we better go check on Jonathan. Jonathan lives over there. Is that the barn the Indians burned down? <laughs> I hope you don't have to go right back. I know Mom won't fix your supper. Well... Gee, Ma's gonna be so mad. I'll help you out, huh? the door. Ma! Ma! Grandpa! Ma! Ma, I'm sorry I made you worry. Why should I worry about you? I never saw you before in my life. I understand, ma'am. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Would you please take him away? Inside. scared me, too, Davy. I was trying to find Pop. I didn't find him. Sam Colby's boy? Yes. He's our son. And him? Mr. Nolan Scott from Mr. Fever's trail drive, Ma. This is my ma and my grandpa, Mr. Nolan. And I guess these men are the reason why ma tried to keep us from coming in. Well, you're in now. Take off your gun belt, just as you take off your hat. This is Colby. How long they've been calling the moves? The belt. It means your gun, Mr. Nolan. You're not the one we're waiting for, Mr. Nolan. You're not a bounty hunter. You're not a dirty Judas bounty hunter. My dad's not a Judas. He does what he has to do. You like your pa, boy? Why shouldn't he? I asked a question. A man gives me a knee like this, I can't walk straight the rest of my life. I got a right to ask a question, haven't I? Look at it. Won't move. 
I got a right to ask about who give it to me, haven't I? I guess so. What do you mean, you guess so? You got a bad leg? You got a leg that won't work? You got a leg that sometimes knocks you down? Sometimes you want to run, it knocks you down. You know about that? Spell Mooney. Sam Colby do to you? Now you're asking a question, Mr. Nolan, aren't you? Well, I mean, a bad leg ain't the end of the world. Fix us some supper, Mrs. Colby. Davy, will you build up the fire for me? so friendly to him. Shh. Well, they're peeing us no mind. He's your friend, isn't he? Excuse me, ma'am. Could I get you to leave out the pepper? I got a touchy stomach. Food at the penitentiary. I'll leave out the pepper. I guess I'm not the first man to tell you you're a good-looking woman. Real good looking woman. Let me help you with the dishes, Miss Colby. in the house. No. Does your father have any of them fireworks left? Thanks. I'm I'm not used to feeding so many people. If we shot one through the window, would they see it in town? They'd be bound to. Would they think anything of it? At this time of year? Of course they would. Speak up! What are you whispering about? I was just telling Mrs. Colby how I found her boy. Didn't think you'd be interested. Keep him company, Mooney. Bothering your grandpa long enough. Well, uh, he ain't bothering me none, Jenny. A boy his age needing to bother his grandpa. I guess plenty of things in here for him to play with. Maybe you could build something. Uh, a fort or something. Oh, oh yes, uh, that's a good idea, Jenny. Come on, boy, I'll, I'll show you how to play Roman soldiers. Yes, Roman soldiers. Now, uh, let me see, we'll, uh, well, we'll lay them right straight out here in a line about five, see? Like that, just the way it starts. Yeah. Yes, five will be enough. Yeah. Getting kind of dark, Mrs. Colby. Mind if I light the lamp? Well, I don't have very much lamp oil left, and I thought we ought to be sparing. What do you think you're doing? Huh? Well, uh, your friend here said it's getting dark. I, I was just going to light the lamp. <laughs> You think I'm blind as well as lame? You leave my grandpa alone! Oh, you... Davy! 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 
think you can handle the boy by yourself? Harv. Oh, please, Mr. Bodie, it's all my fault. Take him over there and sit down. It was foolish of me. I know how you feel about your bad leg, Mr. Bodie. How do you know? It wasn't my husband's fault. It wasn't? No, it wasn't. Who fired a 45 slug into my knee? My husband is paid to bring men into justice. He could have fired to kill. Why didn't he? I'd have been a lot better off. Why didn't he? I don't know, Mr. Bodie. I don't know. Of course you don't know. I don't blame you. How good you know. It was just a little job. Not even a very big store. Hardware merchandise. We were outside of the town taking a rest. Sitting near some strawberry plants. I was wondering how to divvy up what we got. All of a sudden, the Judas showed up. He must have been following us from a job we'd done three weeks before. He didn't ask me my name, or the time of day, or how I was faring. Before I could get up, he fired a 45 into my knee. That's what he did. There's nothing worse than ridding a man of his kneecap. It lames him for life. He can't ever walk straight again. You ever spend any time in jail? No. I have. Five years. I don't mind. I took a risk and I lost. All right. What I did was wrong, and I paid. But that Judas didn't have to cripple me for life, did he? He didn't have to put a 45 into my knee, did he? Now he's coming home. So we're going to welcome him home. You're going to put a 45 into his knee? And make him a cripple like me? I wouldn't do that to anybody. You gonna hurt my pa? I sure am, boy. And a lot worse than he hurt me. But why, mister, why? That's why, boy, that's why. He was doing his duty when he gave you that, wasn't he? Sure he was. But the duty of a bounty hunter has a dirty smell. Vultures get the same smell from their work. Look at it from my side. A couple of 45s when he comes in that door, and he'll walk like me. He'll be a cripple. How'd you like your pa to walk like me, boy, huh? How'd you like that? Don't answer him, Davy. I don't need an answer! I'm already dead! Honest. I've been locked up for five years with the answer. I laid awake at night and I thought of what I'd do to him. And I found out I wasn't as low as a bounty hunter. I wouldn't do what a bounty hunter did. I wouldn't cripple him. I'd kill him quick and clean. Quick and clean. Clean, clean, clean. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh, maketh me, me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still, still waters. He restoreth my, my soul. He guideth me in the paths of righteousness, righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. <laughs> Pa. Oh. 
Mr. Large. He lives down the road a ways. Well, I'm your uncle, in case he asks you. Morning, Davy. Howdy, Mr. Large. I didn't know your ma had company. My uncle, he stand for a spell. I didn't know your pa had a brother. He doesn't. It's my mother's brother. Well, I got a message for your ma. Will you tell her your pa's in town? And as soon as he finishes his business with the sheriff, he'll be home. He said to tell you about an hour. This is what I came for. I know, Davy. We heard. Bob, you take the outside. I'll be at the window. He tries to stable his horse. Bring him in here. You're going to have to watch all four of them, Mooney. Make them stay together. Get on over there with the other two. And don't try nothing funny because I don't mind pulling this trigger. Sit down, lady. Can we try something, Mr. Nolan? You behave yourself, boy. Be a good boy, Davy. Do what Mr. Nolan says. man at the top of the hill. Get back there. All right, all of you, get over there with her. Get over there. Hurry up. That's right, ma'am. You keep him quiet if you know what's good for all of you. Sure, Mrs. Colby. Jenny, didn't you hear me? I'm back. Here he comes. <laughs> If it hadn't been for these, I never would have found it. <laughs> sure you won't stay on a bit so we can thank you proper, Mr. Nolan. Well, I already stayed a little longer than I aim to, Mr. Colby. Davy. Sure sorry about your leg. Don't look like you're going to be able to do much traveling for a while. Well, as long as I can do some work around here, it's all right. When bounty hunting gets this close to home, I'm ready to give it up. Sam, you promised that was going to be your last trip, no matter what. And so it was, my dear, so it was. Uh -huh. In spite of yourself. <laughs> sure, thank you for the grub, Miss Colby. I'm not very used to home cooking. <laughs> well, thank you for everything. Sure, welcome. Goodbye, Grandpa. Hey, goodbye, son. Davy, uh, ain't you gonna see me to my horse? Oh, 
course, bud. Mr. Nolan, would you tell Mr. Faber something for me? Sure, Davy. I guess it's all right for him to know now. I mean, it's not private anymore. Yeah? Well, I, I never meant to be disrespectful to him. But you heard what Ma said about Pa promising it was his last trip. And he was only supposed to be gone a week, and, and it was more than two. And Ma was getting so mad, and she was packing to leave. But I figured, well, she wouldn't leave as long as I was missing. And maybe I could find Pa and bring him home. <laughs> And I wouldn't want Mr. Faber to think I put him to all that trouble for nothing. I'll sure tell him, Davy. Don't worry about it. to Sedalia, Missouri, from day to day, you fall into the habit of trying to read your men, guess what makes them tick. But you don't make much headway. It isn't easy to figure grown-up humans who take this kind of a life for 30 bucks a month and keep. So you finally give up. And you're just glad there's a breed like them to get the beeves to where they're going. I got a good reason to be glad. My name's Gil Favor, trail boss. Pete, you're the only one in this outfit who knows how to sew right. No doubt about that. Well, I don't know. I've been working on this thing for about two days. And all I seem to get is a thumb that looks like a sieve. Help me. Help me. Somebody help me. Please, won't somebody help me? He's out there. You've got to get him. He's out there. Oh. Pete, Rowdy, take a look around out there. See if you see anybody. Be careful. Wishbone, medicine chest. Gunshot wound. Not too bad. But she's lost a lot of blood. Why don't you help? Easy. The men will help. Now lie still and don't try to talk. But they'll kill him. They? My husband made us right away. While he held them off. to water now, Mr. Favor. Quince, first thing in the morning, you and Scarlet dig grave. Yes, sir. No sign of anybody out there. Pete, how much tracking could you do at this time of night? Hardly any. Well, how am 
make a marker. What name shall I put on it? You didn't say. Nobody ought to be laid to rest without a name. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Wish, how do you think she got shot anyway? Oh, probably a stray. The rifle slug. Didn't go very deep, so it was nearly spent. What was that? Sound like a baby. Oh, not out here. Well, let's find it. Just squat there, pick it up. Huh? Oh, oh, pick it up. No, you, you pick it up, Wish. <laughs> What's the matter? I don't know, it's just so little. So that's what you wanted us to hunt for last night. Is it all right? Well, don't ask me. Oh, uh, no, no. Sounded healthy enough. She must have seen our fire and not had enough strength to carry it on in. Well, at least she tried to put it where the snakes and coyotes wouldn't get it. If hey, Pete, you, you better try and backtrack that woman. You come on back when you can. Right. Hey, now, you fellas. Who's going to take this thing? Now, Mr. Faber, who's going to take care of this thing? Oh, no, not me. I got to draw the line somewhere. Oh, I wish Bone too young to be riding a horse. <laughs> oh, no. Now, absolutely not. I got every extra job there is now. Well, wish Bone. Well, I figure you're the only man in this whole outfit smart enough to be able to handle a thing like that. Mr. Favor, I don't mind being the blacksmith or even the barber, but there's one thing I'm not, and I'm not gonna be, and that's a mother. Now, you take this cub right now. Well, we'll drop it off at the next town. The next? Well, that's two weeks from now. Mother's dead. Father's dead, too, probably. But we'll find someone to take it off your hands. Off of my hands in two weeks. You get somebody else to take this right now. No! Say, Wish. What kind is it anyway, boy or girl? It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, I don't know the first thing about taking care of babies. And I'm not going to start learning at my age. No, sir. That's one thing I'm not going to do. Here, you take it. Sure, Mr. Wishbone. No, no. I wouldn't wish you on anything. Not even this. Tracked her for two or three miles, found a dead horse. Couldn't find any sign beyond that. Ground's all rocky and hard. Hey! How 
with everything. You can't see it. Oh, come on, Wishbone, have a heart. I've been out on a long ride. All right, one quick one. That's enough. in sight. Yeah. Too many head to be wild stock. Yeah. Like making a gold strike. Arrowhead brand. Yeah, I never heard of them. Looked at the trail map this morning. There's no ranch, no town, no nothing around here. Walk off and leave this many head in the middle of nowhere. Not the matches. Well, we'll throw them in with our herd. The owner comes along, we can cut them out for him. Yeah, cat. Ah. will be booming in a short while, boys. Get everything ready. You still doctoring him, Reese? How's the shoulder, Harry? Still bleeding. Another couple of inches over, and we'd have buried you, too. Weren't such a good idea to pick J.B. Kincaid to jump. Yeah, they'd still be alive if we hadn't. We had no choice. He had the sick cattle. Anyway, we don't have to bother about him anymore, do we? Well, what's eating you, Reese? Well, why'd you have to wait until I was out of camp before you went on that raid? <laughs> I didn't want you with us. Why not? Figured you might be crazy enough to try and take him all by yourself. Well, I just thought might maybe I could. J.B. Kincaid? But his reputation don't scare me none. <laughs> yeah, well, it did me. You're always boasting how fast I am. Not that fast. As it was, we left three out of 15 men at his ranch and four more needed doctrine. No, sir, I can't afford to run the risk of losing you. Reese, you're the only family I got. Besides, the next move is yours anyway. Yeah, the trail herd picked up those sick cattle just like we planned. He ought to be ripe just about now. So get ready to pay him a little visit. Wait a minute. All the real doing is going to be right here. That herd has got to be set up. Oh, I don't feel like play acting a part of no gun hand just for some stupid trail boss. Well, they aren't all so stupid. You might just have a little more to do than play acting. Trail boss? No. Nope. Oh, who is? It's Bear! Howdy. I'm J.B. Kincaid. Feel fever. May it mean anything to you? Yeah, I reckon it does. Wood gets around. Here, uh, you got a few men to your credit. Well, that's all in the past now. I've turned to rancher. I had 50, 60 head of cattle up there on the trail. Arrowhead brand? Well, how did you know? I had a couple of men herding them. Well, we seen your steers, Mr. Kincaid, but uh, there's nobody with them. You saw them? I thought they'd run off. I have my boys cut them out for you. We picked them up. You picked them up? That's right. Well, mine's a sick herd, Mr. Favor. Ticks. Spanish fever. Spanish fever, they're as good as gone already. One of those steers of yours will be dead within three days unless you get them dipped. Ready! Quince! Scarlet! Ash! Cut out those arrowhead brands. They got the fever. Cut them out fast. 
I'll give him a hand. Right. I'm sorry, Mr. Faber. You're sorry. You know what those ticks can do to a herd? In 72 hours, their tongues swell up in their mouths the size of balloons. They begin to founder and thresh around. All of a sudden, they swell up to the size of elephants. That's when they keel over and die. 72 hours from now, I got 3,000 carcasses on my hands, and you're sorry. I had no idea. I didn't know it was that bad. I mean, they're just little ticks, as far as I you knew. You left a herd with Spanish fever all alone. I told you I left two men with them. I had no idea they'd run off and leave the cattle. You must have known more about Spanish fever than you did. 72 hours from now, I ought to make you watch those cattle go down. I ought to force you to watch them. It'd make you crawl away. Look, I had no choice. I rode on ahead to the danger field dips to arrange to have my cattle dipped. That's the only way to save them, ain't it? Seems to me that a thousand miles around here, all the cattle got ticks. Mine didn't. Till now. Checking our steers. And? Didn't see a one without ticks. Looks like my steers have got 72 hours before they get dipped. I sure wish I could do something, Mr. Faber. You can. Show me where that Dangerfield dip is. How far off is it? Well, it's about 20 miles. You can make it in three days. Three days is the most we got. Spanish fever can act in two days in the heat. And it's hot. Head him up! Move him out! You spread near here, Mr. Kincaid? About 10 miles north. You must have been built recently. That's right. Hey, uh... You know, good-looking woman, dark hair, about uh, 35. What's her name? Huh? I say, what's her name? We don't know. I'd like to meet a good-looking woman. We uh, buried this one recently. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, she left her baby with us, fed it down in the truck wagon. Just thought you might know his kin. Oh, I wouldn't be likely to forget a good-looking woman if I'd seen her. Just a hope. Mr. Kincaid, he sure makes an impression, don't he? Not on me, he don't. Any man can ignore a handsome baby like this. Just don't stand high in my regard. I guess he's as good as his reputation. Mm. Say, Pete, how far you figure this Doby Wells? It's about 30 miles. Mm. All right. I want you to ride into Doby Wells, ask around. If you can't find any kin, we'll find somebody who knew the family. We'll take care of the baby. Mr. Favor, I've been thinking. Hmm? My steers are in with your herd. I like to pull my own weight. I'd like to take a turn riding night herd. Fair enough. Uh, Pete's got the first guard. You can take over from him at 10. Well, uh... Yeah? I was wondering. Hmm? I ain't much sleepy right now. If it's all the same to you, I'll take the first turn. Suit yourself. Mm -hmm. 
three steers, it takes them about finished, Mr. Faber. Well, we're just lucky it wasn't 50. Shoot him. Get him underground quick as you can. Yes, sir. Mr. Wishful, you can't feed this milk to the baby. Why not? Well, the cow's got ticks. It's got the fever, just like the rest of the herd. You sure? Yes, sir. You can go check the cow yourself. Well, what do we do? Well, there's one thing we can't do, is bother Mr. Favor about it. He's got enough problems. Well, your mother knew so much about the powder, maybe she knew something about this. Sugar water. Well, all right, we'll give it a try. Maybe after Ash gets back, it won't be our worry no more. Oh, Mr. Kincaid. Anything happen? No, no, Mr. Favor just changed his mind. He doesn't want you to ride the Dobie well. You looking for me? Well, yeah. I couldn't find you. I figured maybe your horse spooking through you. <laughs> no. I spotted a coyote trailing the edge of the herd, so I drove him off into the hills. Yeah. I'll be glad to get to my blanket roll tonight. Most of the night for lack of milk. Our milk cow's got ticks. Sure wish we knew where we could get some clean milk. Hey, there's some out on the prairie. Are you talking in riddles, Pete? No, I mean it, Wishbone. I cut fresh buffalo sign on the way in here. How far was that, Pete? About two miles. Wishbone, you tell that baby milk's about ready to be delivered. And, uh, where are you going? Oh, uh, I figured on milking me a buffalo cow. You what? Yeah, well, uh... Well, uh, look, we're moving this herd along in an hour. You figure you got time to find a buffalo and milk it? Eat your morning meal and uh, be ready to kick this uh, herd along in an hour? Well, I... I figured on passing on the morning meal. Well, um, as long as you're ready when we are. You mean as long as uh, Mama Buffalo's ready? <laughs> now listen, all of you. We've got to get these steers dipped by tomorrow, or we don't have a steer left. Now once we mount up, you're going to stay in those saddles if I got to tie you in until we reach the danger field dip. The only rest you're going to get from now until then is when the herd needs it. All right, Wishbone. Beat him up. Line up.
Howdy, rowdy. You're supposed to milk that buffalo, not wrestle it. I seen less beat up things come out from under a rock. <laughs> Ash is dead. Oh. Gunshot. His gun wasn't even out of his holster. Any idea who did it? Oh, I haven't got any idea who did it. A lot of tracks around there, though. You may Pete may be able to track them down for you. No. Well, we can't just forget about it. We'll have to for now. After the kettle are dipped, we can find out what happened. The trail's gonna be cold by then. And the kettle will be dead by then, unless we keep kicking him along. And we need every drover. Give him a hand. Why don't you get his horse? I trailed my wife to your camp. There was a woman came into our camp a little while back. My wife. She had her baby. Where is she? Oh. Ready. Who are you, mister? My name is Kincaid. Not too common a name. We've already got a man here who says his name's Kincaid. Who, him? Did he call himself Kincaid? J.B. Kincaid, that's what he said. He's a liar and a murderer. You heard the man accuse you. What do you say? I'm Reese Dangerfield. This bunch raided my ranch. Arrowhead brand cattle? Mine. You know that herd was sick? Went to Dangerfield and his brother wanted my cattle dipped. They propositioned me to use them to infect a big trail herd. I turned them down. They raided me to get my cattle. Where's my wife? She did. Let me kill him. He killed my wife. Where's my baby? He's in the supply wagon, alive and well. Wishbone, show him. You must have killed Ash. You left the herd last night. I couldn't find you. I told you I was chasing a coyote. He lied about his name. He lied about killing Ash, too. Mister, you're going to swing. We're not the ones to swing anybody. Yeah, your boss is the only one with any brains. If anything happens to me, you can forget about your herd getting to Sedalia. Keep talking. Well, uh, Dangerfield Dip is the only one within 200 miles. If we don't agree to dip your cattle, they're going to die. Now, you figure just how agreeable my brother's going to be if anything happens to me. We'll take real good care of him, then. His being healthy may be the only way to save the herd. And don't let Kincaid near him. At least until I get back. <laughs> Where are you going? I think I'm gonna let you ride in that rattlesnake nest alone, and you've forgotten how good at pulling fangs I am. Well, pull yourself together. I'll get the horses. Yeah, well, only take a minute. Welcome to Dangerfield Dips. I'm you in Dangerfield. Your favor, this is Rowdy Yates. I've got a sick herd. Uh, how much dipping for ticks? Our rates are reasonable, Mr. Favor. It's not what I asked. How much? Well, why don't you bring your herd in? We'll make a tally, and I'll give you an exact figure. My tally's up to 3,000 head, give or take a few, uh, plus 50, 60 arrowhead steers. Charge is 500 head. Oh, well. Uh, you call that reasonable? Figure it this way. You give us the 500 head, you end up with 2,500. If you don't give us the 500 head, <laughs> you end up with nothing. Well, Mr. Dangerfield, that sounds uh, pretty close to robbery. I'll give you a fair price. You'll give me 500 head. <laughs> Mr. You haven't got a thing to say about this. There isn't another dip within 200 miles. So I've heard. 
From your brother. What about him? Oh, he's with us for a while. What have you done to him? Just found out his name wasn't Kincaid is all. Uh, we're taking real good care of him. You're lucky. So far. You roughhouse him. And you and your friend here won't ever get over it, I promise you. We don't want to roughhouse him. What do you want? You planted a herd full of Spanish fever on the trail. It infected my herd. I want him clean. All right. What about my brother? You get him back after the herd is dipped. I'll dip your herd as soon as you bring Reese to me. You get your brother back after the herd is dipped. Regular charge, five cents a head. All right, five cents a head, it's a deal. You and that's throwing $10,000 away. Well, you got what you came for, now go on back and bring a herd in. Now, we have got this straight, haven't we? We don't deposit Reese with you until uh, after the last head has been dipped. Mr. Favor, I don't have to like this, but I have got it straight. Bye. It won't do you any good to stand there looking at me like that. They got my brother, my stupid, idiotic brother. And I think a lot more of him than any of you think I ought to, don't I? Well, I'll handle it. You just let me handle it, and nobody will suffer. Not you, or me, or my brother. Unless he does something crazy, and even then, I won't let him suffer. Somehow, I'll find a way to make it right for him. For all of us. that roving eye on Kincaid. Make sure you don't tear a gun loose. Pete, they're slowing up real bad. We're going to lose a lot of cattle right here if we don't ease up. Yeah, they're beginning to flounder. We'll have to rest them for a while. But only for a short spell. Looks like his mother around the eyes. She had beautiful eyes. That idiot Reese coming in here using your name. They sure must have figured they killed you, too. When I sent Helen and the baby off, there was a lot of smoke and fire. Bellied out the back door into a root cellar. They were so interested in me, they didn't notice Helen and the baby had gone. Where's your gun belt, Mr. Kincaid? You lose it in the raid? Give it away when I got married. Well, no offense meant, but J.B. Kincaid without a gun is... Your name is J.B. Kincaid. You can't afford to let people know you're walking around without a gun. That don't make good sense. Seem to make good sense. I don't know now. Well, your shoes, I guess I wouldn't know either. I miss my wife, Wishbone, and I miss her bad. I'm grateful the baby's alive, but I miss my wife. Well, now, hold on, Mr. Kincaid. These things can be used right, or they can be used wrong. But you're not using it in either case. Mr. Faber's orders. Now, I'll take my gun back. I need it more than you do, Wishbone. No, sir. I gotta ask you for my gun. Wishbone, if I have to, I'll beat you down, or I'll kill you. Gonna shoot me down in front of everybody? In spite of what Mr. Favor said? I don't mind so much that your brother and his people burned me out and shot me up. 
But my wife was shot up so bad she died. You owe it to Mr. Favor to not do this, Mr. Kincaid. I owe my wife more. Give him a gun. None of these drovers wants to lose their herd. That's exactly what'll happen if they let you kill me. How about it, boys? You want to get your herd to the dip alive, like Mr. Favor said? You, give him a gun. Nobody gives him a gun. What do you mean? You gave him yours, didn't you? Give it to him. I didn't give him my gun. He worked it away from me. Now, you give him your gun, and you're going against Mr. Favor's orders, Joe Scarlett. You going to do that? No. There's only one man here I want to kill. Maybe we better do what he says. Give it to him. Cut him loose. Let me get the blood back in my hands. Get it working good. You know, it's not like my brother to let a job go unfinished. I'd have to remember to ask him how come you to get away. Pick up the gun. I hate to take advantage of you like this. You being so beat up. He's dead. It had to be done. It's your gun. What were you doing, Scarlett? Looking down Kincaid's gun barrel. There was nothing any of us could do. Who did it? Me, Mr. Faber. Who let him have a gun? He got hold of mine. This is the boss's orders. How'd you let a thing like this happen? Why, all the fuss. A man who didn't deserve to live is dead, that's all. For any of you who don't know what this means, we were going to be seen safely through the dip because he was alive and well. He's no longer alive and well. Due to me? Whether due to you or not, we no longer have a bargain. Yeah, well, we don't have to let the man back there know that. I'm not going to bargain with a dead man. Why not? Where the herd's concerned, I think I would. I made a deal for a live one. A man's only as good as his word. I'll keep my bargain. Now, you can come with me or not. Are you going to tell you and Dangerfield his brother's dead? Just that. Boy, I think you're wrong, but I'm going with you. For your sake. For my sake? You're going to need all the help you can get, boss. Seems I've caused a lot of trouble. Is there anything I can do to help? Mr. Kincaid. Best take yourself and your son. Move on. What we have to do no longer concerns you. Well, I'd do that, Mr. Favor, but how? How'd I get food for Jimmy on my own? The two of us have got to stay with the drive until you reach the next town. That's no lie. Oh. Get yourself into the supply wagon. And stay there. That's an order. Charlotte, Quince, get him on the ground. Get that herd to the dip, and fast. Our 72 hours is just about up. Right. Now, don't you cause any more trouble. Uh, you and that, that son of yours, get in the wagon. The back end of the wagon. Awful fast, Mr. Favor. Change your mind about our deal? My, uh, mind's been changed for me. Mm -hmm. It has? Your, uh, brother's dead. Who killed him? It happened. I guess you can say I'm responsible. Yeah. You're responsible, but who did it? You! No. After the dip, and I'll show you where we buried him. A half hour ago, you were gonna give me my brother. Now you're gonna give me a grave! After the dipping. You think it goes on like nothing happened? Your price was 500 head. With my brother alive. 
Now with him. Dead, the price goes up. Name it. Half the herd. You got no choice. You got no choice? You got a choice. You got 20 men on their way here just itching to back you up. When they get through with you people, there won't be enough of you left to be thinking about a herd. Ramrod's a hothead trail, boss. Ramrod pulled the trigger on my brother? No, he was here with me when it happened. You got a deal. Hold it, trail boss. You're staying here. Ramrod can bring the cattle in. Bring the herd in, Roddy. They only got a couple of hours before they start dropping. Boss, you just can't walk off. He's too smart to think we'll let him live. Smart? Fool. Fool thinks more of his cattle than his own skin. Anything foolish when we reach the dip. No matter how much I think of the boss, we gotta get these cattle through. Ewan, there they come. All right, take your spots. Trail boss, get up in that wagon box. Stand on the seat. What for? So you'll be in plain sight of your men. They'll know if they try anything, you'll make a perfect target. Now get up there! Give me your guns. What are doing, mister? You just try and take them, mister. Mr. Favor, maybe you can make them listen? That wasn't part of the deal. It is now. If you want that herd dip, I gotta have the guns. How about it, boss? Give them your guns. All right, get the rest of them. Mistake having us turn in our guns. Maybe. He must think one of us got an ace up our sleeves. I sure hope we have. What's gonna happen when we finish? Hurry him through.
about a dozen more. Then what's going to happen, Mr. Wishbone? What's going to happen to us? Well, don't count on us getting past the dip. Get all those drovers and line them up over here. All right, off your horses. Get over there. Come on, move. The rest of you, too. Line up over there. All right. Pick out your half. I'm gonna pick something else first. The man who gunned Reese. Now, who was it? None of them. Get over there. Now, which one of you killed my brother? The man who points him out saves his own life. Patience is about to run out. I give the word, my men will cut you all down. Then I'll be sure and get the one who shot Breeze. Now, who was it? Who was it? Mr. Faber left me in charge. I'm responsible. Now, you had nothing to do with it, Pete Nolan. It was my gun. And I'm the one who fired it. Kincaid! You're the one I wanted, Ewan. That's enough. Kincaid didn't want to kill anybody else. You heard, Mr. Faber. I'm satisfied. But I don't know how long the feeling is going to stay with me. Yes, you and owes me this much. Buggy and a team. Now come get some of these blankets. We want that baby kept comfortable. <laughs> Say, uh, who gave you the gun this time? Reese's gun. Found it in the supply wagon with his gun belt. And uh, uh, you? Well, you forgot the one that never comes off me except when I bathe. <laughs> oh, when we uh, sell the herd in Sedalia, you want us to send your share from the cattle uh, on into Stanton? Me and the baby will be staying with my sister for a while. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything. I'm sorry for all the trouble I made you, Mr. Faber. You more than made up for it, Mr. King. Now you take good care of J.B. Jr. Boy, his name ain't gonna be J.B. Jr. Gonna change it to J.W. James Wishbone Kincaid. Yes, sir. James Wishbone Kincaid. It's a proud and handsome name. I'm sure glad to get that brat off my hands. Now I can stop being a mother. Get him up! Move him out! Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Though the streams are swollen, keep them doggies rolling. are senseless, stupid beasts. They go halfway across a continent just to be slaughtered. The trouble is, nobody ever trained them to go alone. It takes men to push a herd north. Men and time and sometimes pain. That's where I come in. I'm one of the men. Gil Faber, trail boss. 
You hear him? Huh? Oh, oh. Drovers, they always yell like that. Cal get used to it, keeps them from hearing things and not. Hey, Jasper's crazy. I don't see any papers on him. Here's a photograph. What happened? He tried to kill me. Well, what for? Well, how would I know? Pete's about time to bed down the herd anyway. We'll find out who he is when he comes around. That is, if he can tell us. Jim, Joe, let's put him to bed. Hey, boss. What have you done? We were just protecting ourselves, miss, and it took some doing at that. Harry? Harry? He'll come around all right. I'm sorry I had to bat him with a gun, but he didn't leave us much choice. Well, I'll answer for anything he did, any damage he caused. We took this off of him. Oh, that's my husband, Mr. Whitman's son. I'm Rose Whitman. Mrs. Whitman, my name's Favor. How do you do? I live at a ranch about a mile east from here. If you can help me get Harry into the buggy, I think we'll be able to make it home without trouble. Why don't trouble. you just rest here a while first? I'll have one of the men ride over and let your husband know what's happened. My husband passed away six months ago. Oh, sorry. Well, maybe I could ride back to your ranch and bring back one of your hands. Well, Mr. Whitman and I live alone now. Well, I'd better go with you myself, then. No, there's no need for that. Mr. Whitman isn't always as violent as you just saw him. When his mind is clear, he's one of the gentlest people on Earth. He sure comes close to being one of the strongest. He was the strongest once, when he was a young man in the ring. So that's what he was doing, boxing, huh? He was a champion of England and Ireland. Sometimes when he hears something that reminds him of the day he was beaten, he loses control. I think maybe the shouting of your riders. Feeling all right? Harry? Harry, this is Mr. Favor and... Rowdy, Yates. They're friends of mine, Harry. I don't think Mr. Whitman is quite himself yet. I wonder, might I take you up on that offer after all? Certainly, Mrs. Whitman. Rowdy, you let the men know I'll be going for a while, and then you follow on after us. Right. Not a word. Well, blame the silence on me, Mr. Favor, not Harry. No blame to anybody. Pig was the first champion. Then came Pipes. Then Gritton. Then Broughton. That's right. I And I broke Tom Hyer's jaw in the 30th round. Boston, 1846. You know, he was a very good man. I promised to meet him again. And, uh, of course, you know, I've got to soak these knuckles a little more. You see, they're not ready yet. 
did Hyacinth send it to me? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, it's his jaw. See, he needs more time for it to heal. Now, don't lie to him. I, I don't want him to feel small or baggy. Just tell him that I'm not ready either. Here's John's picture, Harry. It fell out of your pocket. If you're going back in training, you'll need your sleep. Ah, oh, there's a son to be proud of. A little small for bare knuckle fighting, but a fine heart, a good brain. Aye. You're breaking training, Harry. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, gentlemen, for saying good night so early, but if you have the prize ring, you'll understand. Oh, we understand. Harry sleeps in the barn. He loves the smell of the hay. Mrs. Whitman, I know it's none of my business, but shouldn't you have a couple of hired hands around in case anything happens? It isn't that easy to find someone you can trust nowadays. Well, our trail map says we're close to a town named Rock Point. Don't you have any friends in there you could have come out? I don't get into Rock Point very often. My husband and I moved here just a month before he died. We never had a chance to make many friends. Aren't you worried about your safety? Oh, nothing will happen to me. You'll stay for supper. I have a stewing chicken. It'd sure be a relief from Wishbone Stew, but uh, we got work to do. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Well, thanks for putting yourself to all that trouble on my account. No trouble. We'll uh, tie up your team before we leave. Thank you. Beat him if you're afraid, Harry. You're afraid, Harry. Get on your feet and fight. Coward. Get up, coward. Get up, coward. I was in the barn. How did I get here? Well, you were walking in your sleep. You fell against the rain barrel. Oh. Now you go in the house and get some towels. Dry yourself off before you catch your death. Yeah. All right. comes and it goes. Nobody would believe it unless they'd seen him in one of his spells. Mrs. Whitman, what are you going to do about this? I don't know. My husband used to say if he got any worse, we should commit him to a territorial asylum, but... You know, it's strange. There's been a federal judge holding court here in town for the last week. I felt like taking Harry to him and having the judge commit him, but... I backed away from it. Judge gone yet? No, he'll be there until tomorrow afternoon. Well, it isn't a very easy decision to make. Well, it better become easy to decide, and real quick, too. Well, everybody in town likes Harry. I wouldn't have any witnesses. You've got two witnesses right here. The herd could get along without us for a day, anyway. Yeah, and there's that uh, stew and chicken that you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, Roddy, and I could sleep in the barn, go into town with you first thing in the morning. Well, uh... It'll be better. It'll be better for him. You know, 
you know I'd almost forgotten that luxury. What luxury, Mrs. Whitman? Having a man make up my mind for me again. Nice behaved town. Folks usually make a carnival out of court week. Carnival there. A few months ago, the town elected a new marshal. He's a fire and brimstone man. It was his intention to make this town spotless. He do seem to be a man of his word. Well, look who's come to town. Hey, now. The only real woman in Rock Point. That's what them who knew her up in Abilene say. We had us a few buttes like that down to the keg house before your brother started scrubbing this town. You shut up about him. Well, I'll shut up, but if it wasn't for Marshall Thompson, we'd have us a town instead of a graveyard. I thought the Marshal had run her out of town. Not that one. She's too brazen to run. Just so you'll know, I worked in the Crystal Palace Saloon in Abilene. I warned my husband how people would feel. I'm sorry, Harry. We don't need these outsiders to help us, Rose. Let me stay. Everything will be all right. You'll see. The judge has a reputation for being a very smart man, Harry. We'll let him decide. Used to see a lot more of you in Abilene, Rose. Since when you've been so fussy. All right. Break it up. Break it up. You're under arrest, mister. For what? For starting a rough house. A what? There'll be a fine. Five dollars. It's worth it. Give that to the clerk. See that you get a receipt. Oh, Rose, these two saddle tramps working for you? We're pushing a herd north on the Sedalia, Missouri Trail, mister. I haven't heard anything about a herd. Maybe you ain't been listening. Yes, he listens. Anything anybody says against me, he listens. Better not crowd her, Lou. She's one of our kind. Any of you people ever see these two before? I've never seen them, Lou. Maybe good at dealing cards or spinning roulette wheels? He's got it in his mind I'm going to open a saloon. Any man befriends me, he figures got to be a card dealer or a stick man I'm bringing in. Greg, how about it? You seen these two before? In Silver City, I saw a man that looked like this one. Uh, I'm not sure. They smell like cowpokes. But you only have to walk through a cow yard to smell like that. Until you find somebody who's sure, we've got business here and you're holding us up. Uh, just a minute. I'll take the guns. No, you won't. You're violating the law. No wearing of firearms within the limits of Rock Point. Give me the guns. You'll do a lot better, mister, if you ask nice. Do what the man says, Rowdy. Hear ye, hear ye. The First District Court of the United States is now in session. Judge James Cuff presiding. All right, court's open. First case. Your Honor. Yes? We'd appreciate it if you'd put the Whitman case at the top of your list. Well, what's your reason for this request? Mr. Yates and I are witnesses for Mrs. Whitman, but we're also pushing a herd north, and we're kind of pressed for time. Well, all right. If there are no objections, we'll take the Whitman case.
Well, ma'am, what's your complaint? Well, Your Honor, this is pretty difficult for Mrs. Whitman. Maybe I could talk for her? Maybe you can. That is, if it's all right with her. Is it, ma'am? All right, go ahead and speak. Mrs. Whitman is here about her father-in-law, Harry Whitman. Yeah, well, get on with it. She wants the court to make out papers to put him in the territorial asylum. She wants what? Now, Marshal, I must remind you that this is a court of law. You get your chance to talk at the proper time. I'd better. What is your reason for this request, ma'am? Well, for the last few months, especially since my husband died, Mr. Whitman has been getting continually worse. He's growing dangerous. I think it would be better for him to be put away somewhere where he can be taken care of. What's the matter, Rose? You getting tired of sitting up with the old man? And now I saw the man that said that. I want you to shut your mouth, mister, and keep it shut. I want to remind you again that this is a court of law. And dignity is going to be maintained as long as I'm in charge. What do you mean by dangerous, ma'am? Well, he came mighty close to killing me, Judge. What kind of a filthy railroading trick is this? I've seen a lot of miserable human beings in my life, but these three beat them all. I know this woman, Judge. The whole town knows her. Sure, she wants to put the old man away. She's no nursemaid. Well, why don't you listen to the witnesses? What witnesses? A couple of saddle traps you picked up off the trail to do you a favor? You sit down. Sit down. Quiet. Old man. Do you know why you're here, old man? Well, it looks like my daughter-in-law has been listening to some outsiders who think I ought to be put away, sir. Uh, what is your name? My name's Harry Whitman. How old are you, Harry? I'm 62. Uh, do you know what day of the week you was born on? I was born on Monday, December the 10th, sir. Now, Harry, I'm going to ask you a very strange question. Do you know the difference between heat lightning and fork lightning? I, I don't know what makes the difference, but I know how the difference looks. Heat lightning lights up all the skies, but fork lightning makes jagged streaks like that. Mm -hmm. Harry, what town are you in? In Rock Point, sir. Do you think you know the difference between right and wrong? Yes, sir. Uh, Harry, suppose you were a judge and two men were brought up in front of you both of them claiming the same pig. What would be the first thing you'd do? Well, I'd find out which one was the liar. <laughs> Suppose both of these men had a reputation for honesty, for telling the truth. Ah, uh, then I'd kill the pig. Why, Harry? Well, because I'd sit them down both together to make friends over a nice pork dinner. <laughs> <laughs> This man is just as sane as anybody in this place. Petition denied. Judge, you're making a mistake. There are a great many bare-knuckle fighters back east in this man's condition. Now, they don't put them away there, and I don't intend to put them away here. I don't know about that, but I do know that I saw him try to kill Mrs. Whitman. Look, Judge, it's for his own good as well as for hers. I can find no evidence on which to commit Harry Whitman to an institution. Case dismissed. Please, please, it's best for him. He doesn't want to kill anybody. Nobody here knows what he's like when he's not in his right mind. It's best for him. Anybody here ever see Harry try to kill? No. 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 She's trying to send him away.
Dave. Leave her alone, huh? Why? Just do as I say. Harry? I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone. Let's have our guns, Marshal. Leaving us already, cowherds? For a while, Marshal. A while? You're leaving for good. Tell me, what is it makes you folks in this town so friendly? Long, hard hours of practice? You call it. Practice and experience. It's taken us a long time to scrub up this town, and we don't aim to have it all dirtied up by a couple of two-bit saddle tramps from off the Sedalia Trail. I'll tell you something, Marshal. Seeing the way you treat your neighbors in this town, I know one thing. Don't worry about dirtying up your town. Couldn't get any filter than it is. We want to tell you how sorry we are about how it turned out. If there's anything we can do. Mrs. Whitman, if it's I... It's best to leave her alone, I guess. Don't worry about me. Tears in a woman aren't always what you think. Scum like that isn't worth crying over. I'm used to that kind. There's no reason why you should be. You know Abilene, Mr. Favor? Some. Have you ever been to the Crystal Palace? Yes, ma'am. Johnny came in there one night to play Pharaoh. I sat down next to him, and he said I brought him luck. He'd just brought his ranch, and he was on his way to pick up his father. He asked me to marry him. And I wasn't afraid, either. I said yes. And you can imagine what a fuss it caused when he brought me here. You, you saw some of it just now. That's why we didn't have any visitors. That's why people in Rock Point... Believe what she said about the old man coming back, acting natural? What's more important, she doesn't believe it either. But she asked us out of it. She must have good reason. We could use some wheels. Our wagons are all crippled. Hey there! You what you claim? Rovers? That's right. The marshal claims you're here to start a saloon with Rose Whitman. The marshal's a liar. The marshal's my brother. Well, then, you've got a liar in the family. <laughs> no, not Brother Lou. He's too upright for lies. Town. Well, now, whenever was that? Poor Lou Marshall made himself Mr. Law and Order in person. You mean there's nobody to stand in his way? The old cemetery full of people stood in the Marshall's way. That's a good wheel. Got a dozen of them. 
could use three, if you could lend us a wagon to hold them in. Seven dollars apiece. Good enough. Twenty-one. There's nobody in this town who side with a woman who needs help. Point is, mister, you side with her, the marshal just figures you're siding against him. Well, now, you think the marshal could stand it if uh, you rolled a wheel alongside of us? Wagon's just outside. All right, let's have it. How long are you gonna keep milling this thing around your mind like a cat wearing a red? Be all right if we take the wheels back to camp before we go back to town? Yeah. What's the matter, Mrs. Whitman? Nothing. Well, you don't look like it's nothing. Your voice don't sound right, neither. I'm worried about Harry. He's up in the hills. I'm afraid something might happen to him. Oh, yeah. Well, what you need is a man around this place. I mean, someone else and Harry. I know. Well, you know, I... I just never rest if I didn't try to apologize for the way... My brother and the rest of them Clydes acted toward you in court this morning. <laughs> you know, Brother Louie, he just don't understand human beings. I think a lot of people are getting sick and tired of his ways. But I, uh, I didn't come here just to apologize for my brother. I came to help. Help? Yeah. You haven't got enough money to take care of yourself and that father-in-law of yours forever. I want to help you get enough so you can. How? You want to get back east, don't you? You let go don't of you? me. You want to get back east and dress like a lady and spend money like you were something? Isn't that it, huh? Is there anything wrong with that? No. No. The only thing wrong is... You can't do it. Not with a millstone around your neck. <laughs> and that old man is a millstone, isn't he? You just can't shake him loose. What are you getting at? How much you figure this house and the barn, and livestock and acreage is worth? Five. That's the right smart idea. A lot of high living on four thousand dollars. All right. All right, Dave. That's fine, Rose. Fine. We got us a bargain. Yes. You'll find him up in the hills above the North Road. He always goes up there to brood like a child or a dumb animal. But you haven't told me, Rose. What I do? How do I get him riled up? 
All those years in the ring. He was in too long. Whenever he remembers that last time when they had to carry him out, it took him two days to regain his senses. Now, wait a minute, Rose. I don't want to take advantage of you. I want this thing straight and above board. You got a pencil and paper? Sit down. All you have to do is to write down that when and if you make a sale of this property after it's yours, I'm going to get half. You see, I'm like you, Rose. I want to get away from this stinking town, too. And with $4,000, I can stay away for a long time. Or we could stay away for a long time. Why don't you tell me, Harry? What are you doing out here? Well, where else is there to go? Well, they give you a hard time in town. Yeah. They don't understand. Nobody understands. I just want to fight again, even if it kill me. But the doctors say no. Yeah, sure, I know. Now, don't you worry about it anymore. Hyas did it. He knocked me out in that thirtieth round in Liverpool. See, I broke his jaw in Boston. And then I gave him another fight in Liverpool. He hit me so hard that I had to go to hospital. Some of the people said that I fell down on purpose. No. Yeah. I mean, some said I was a coward. People got no right to say that to you. And I just want to fight again. I'll tell you what. I'll set you up a fight. Then you can show them all. Huh, Harry? Dave. You're my friend, Dave. show them. You said we're going to show them. I know, I know, but I want to set it up, see? we got to do this thing right, Harry boy, so everyone will know you're still champion. Now, come on. Ah, look at that. they got the ring and the dressing rooms locked up. That's my boy. Now you, uh, you go on in there and lie down, Harry. You get yourself some rest while I arrange things. Oh, you're good to me, Dave. It's a long time since anybody understood me. But my son understood me. He wouldn't allow anybody to call me a coward while he was alive. Everything's gonna be all right, Harry boy. You just rest up. Now I'm gonna close the door so no one will bother you. What are you doing? This, this is not a dressing room. This is your brother's jail. You're absolutely right, Harry. This is a jail. Well, why'd you lock the door? This is where you belong. Jail! What do you mean? What are you doing, Dave? This is what they do to quitters, Harry. Cowards! They lock them up! Oh, Dave, don't fool me. You know I'm all right. Sometimes I get mixed up a bit. And I've been hit so many times that sometimes I feel myself in, in the ring. I can see the lights go on and they go off again. 
Oh, sometimes I get mixed up so that I just, just don't know where I am. But I'm all right, Dave. Let me out. You ain't never gonna get out, Harry. Not till you prove you can fight. Let me out. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Harry, Let me out of look here. at this over here. Look Let here. Me out of here. Look, your picture's everywhere. In all the newspapers. Let Harry Whitman, king of the flopbacks. Oh, let me out of here. Come on. Here. Put up I'm, your dukes. I'm the champion of England and Ireland. Everybody knows me. I'm Harry Whitman. Pete was the first champion. Then came Pipes. Then Griffith. Then, then, then Broughton. And I broke Tom Highest jaw in the 30th round. That was a fight. That was a fight when I broke his jaw. Let me out of here. Wait. Harry. Crowd this way. Come on, Harry. Come on. Come on, Harry. Come on, this way, Harry. Come on, champ. Hire's waiting to beat you to a pup. I think I'll go home. You can't go home. Your son's gone. Don't you remember? He can't help you now. Leave me alone. Give me that picture. Come on, get up and fight, you miserable old fall down. Give me that picture. What kind of a champion were you? You're afraid to fight higher, ain't you? Ain't you? If you ain't scared, come on, let's see how you fight or fall down. Give me that picture. It's Dave Thompson. What is this? Sorry, Mush. He's dead. Dave. Dave! Come away from him, Lou. Two of you. Carry him inside. You had to come back, didn't you, Saddletrap? You couldn't leave the thing alone. It took two of you to do Put it. this all wrong, Marshal. He was already dead when we came here. Here, he knows that. Well, speak up, you drunken Jasper. Look, Marshal, we're leaving the same way we came in. Somebody tries to stop us, somebody gets hurt. You two are gonna beg to die. I had plans for Davy. This was gonna be a decent town for him to grow up in. No more temptation. There's a tree down at the end of the street. Come on. Wait, wait. Look, you can't do this. These men couldn't have killed Dave. Who else could have killed him? I loaned them my wagon this afternoon. I seen them ride out of town. They came back, didn't they? Well, that doesn't mean it. Lou, you cleaned up this town. Now, you can't do this. Better go on home, Mel. You're in my way. Maybe it's just as well I am in your way. Lou, it's been a long time since anybody tried to talk sense to you around here. You're pushing me, Mel. It was Dave they killed. Who said? Tanner, he, he just said that Dave was dead. Tanner saw them. He didn't say he saw it. Well, don't just stand there. Tell him the truth. They couldn't have done it. I stumbled over Dave on, on my way home. He was dead then. I ran to the barn. I saw these fellows pull up. And if they didn't do it, who did? I seen, I seen Harry Whitman run off as I come up. Harry. Harry Whitman. That's right. Harry Whitman. Anybody know where the old man might be? He only has one place to go. Anybody that follows me tonight is a deputy, right now. Thompson, you already made one bad mistake. Don't make another. You men, don't let him lead you into this. Thanks to both of you for what you did. The old man went back to the farm. He's going after Rose. Better get there before they do.
for the old man. You're bound and determined to lynch somebody. Is that it, Thompson? Doesn't matter much who. Me, Harry Whitman, anybody. Harry killed Dave. A man out of his senses killed Dave. He's no more responsible for what he did than a, than a gun would be. It takes something to trigger it, just as it took something to turn Harry Whitman loose. Every one of you men in that courtroom, too deaf to listen to Rose Whitman, had a hand in Dave's death. You made Harry Whitman your responsibility, and then you went home and you forgot about it. You're the ones responsible for Dave Thompson's death. All right, you've been listening to this saddle tramp spouting off. Now listen to me. I'll tell you what killed Davey. Filth and sin. You're letting a madman, a dance hall woman, and a couple of cowherds butt into our way of life. I took your dirty little town and scrubbed it till its face showed, and I can do it again. It has to be done again. Come on. Well, come on. Are you going to let these two cowherds run your town? We came here to do justice. We ain't going to help you, Lou. Time somebody stood up to you, you ain't any good for us anymore. Maybe you were once, but you're not anymore. Lou, we're not forgetting what you did for us. Sure, you cleaned up the town. You, you tamed it when it was wild. You made it a better place to live in, but you didn't stop at that. You had to keep right on ruling with an iron hand till you were so scared. We... We've been living our lives just the way you wanted us to, doing everything you wanted us to do. Why do you think we came here with you tonight? To, to help you because of your brother? No. We're here because not one of us had the guts to stand up to you. We were too afraid to speak up when you wanted us to lynch Harry here. Thank you, mister, for standing up to him for us. Come on, Lou. Let's go home. Oh, oh Marshal Thompson, you're not going without Harry, are you? Not after what he did to your brother. No. Mel's right. I was going to lynch a man. I don't deserve this. Not anymore. We'll take Harry with us, Miss Whitman. We'll take him to the doctor. To the doctor? What'll he do? Give him a pill? Rest him up and then send him back to me? I don't want him back here. I'm scared stiff of him. There's no call for you to talk like that, Rose. I'm not mad. Sometimes my brain is a little hazy and my head aches. Sometimes the taunt of people makes me hear the howls from the crowd. And I feel the bare knuckles against my face and the back of my head. And I gotta fight back, Rose. I'm not mad. You know that. I'm all right. Point is, Miss Whitman, maybe he won't have those spells anymore if the doctor treats him and rests him up. Well, none of us wants to see Harry sent away. You think those are just spells? I'll show you. Harry, do you know what they're all saying? They're all saying you're a coward. They're saying you're lying down because you're afraid. You're afraid of hire. They're all laughing, Harry, because they think you're a coward. Rose, 
It was you all along who wanted me put away. It was you that taunted me. You and Dave. I think you sent Dave to taunt me. Well, if it means that much to you, I'll go. I'll willingly go, Rose. Well, don't you want to say goodbye to me? Gentlemen, take me to the place she wanted me to go. I won't hurt you. I won't hurt anybody anymore. that hurt her the most. At least I can do is stay with her for a while. Cloudy? Streams are swollen, keep them doggies rolling, roll. 